Court calls the case, people versus Shante Taylor. Amber Harris with on behalf of Miss Shante Taylor. Miss Taylor, if you are present, can you please unmute and state your name for the record? How you doing? Shante Taylor, I'm a male. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. There you, there sorry. He's um, um, one, one plus nor. There he goes. Okay. How you doing, Mr. Right. Simpson? Long time no see. I was going to say, how you doing? All right, brother. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. Why we have you here? You, yeah, you, you still owe money? That's what I know. That's what that's it's been. I thought it was over with after they told me to do the probation. I didn't, I couldn't afford to pay the fees then. That was years and years ago. So I, so I'm gonna get my license and stuff. They told me this, that. So they postponed my stuff with my license all the way after June 8th. Told me to just take care of my business with you, go get my take my test to get my license and come back talk to you. <laughs> you so you're actually gonna get a license. Yeah, I'm actually going to get this. I got to pay two clearances. I got to pay two clearances. <laughs> After all this be, time, two clearances. You're going to be able to drive. Yes, I will be eligible to drive finally. So he, can, he is eligible to drive, really, like legally drive. Yes, I, I got to go down there. I got to um, go downtown to Ipsy and then over to uh, Whitaker to uh, pay a $45 ticket. I mean, a $40, $45 clearance and another $45 clearance. I've been waiting a Thursday when I get paid so I can go take care of it. What have you been doing with yourself in between now? For oh, man, I got I got five kids I've been raising and just been working on it all. I'm not on it all, but I've been working for the past five, six years. Just My mom, Erlene Taylor, she just passed March 1st, so buried her. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. But you're staying out of trouble. Oh, yes, sir. Look at my Every record. Check me TV, out. We're always in trouble. Just... I haven't, I haven't, listen, I haven't caught a felony and I gave up on felonies and trying to be a, uh, a I'm tapeneur years ago when you made me stand up and apologize in front of my mom in court. That was over 15 years ago. And that's who you had to apologize to. You remember that. I remember that. You just had came and joined the gang up here and I remember. He said, man, young man, stand up and turn around, apologize to your mom before I give you this probation. <laughs> 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 yeah, that yeah, was a long time ago. Well, yes, sir. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you, sir. It's good to see you. And it, and the thing is, what's good to see is that you got a plan that you were trying to do something, but you can't do it because that's how this stuff just continues to haunt you. Right. right? Um. So how are you got you only owe two eighty on this? How do you plan on getting that paid? Well, actually, um, I guess I'm gonna have to break it down to lump sum to get it paid. But I get paid once a week and stuff. So I work out here in Ann Arbor. It's the point is not paying it. It's when I'm going to pay it. I'm trying to pay it quick as possible. So this week I'm going to take care of my tickets and stuff, the ticket fees, uh, fees and stuff, and and then um get you knocked down. Like, you know, I got to knock the totem pole down. But it's gonna get paid. I have no choice. I don't want no problems with you. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I like you don't you don't want me to come back here. Young man, I'm I'm um I'm happy you're doing well and that you're raising your kids like you should. Thank you. And that you're trying to get everything straight, that you're trying to get your license and move on. And how dare I, although I stood in your way before to try to get you right. How dare I try to stand in your way at this point? So that right. two hundred, that two hundred eighty dollars, I'm waiving that entire balance. You're all set with us. Thank you, sir. Right. God bless you, man. And you take care of yourself. You too. Don't, don't be coming back up in here. Cause see, I remember no, I'm not. everything. All right. I know. <laughs> you know. I know. You know. <laughs> you have a blessed day. <laughs> you do the same. Take care. Thank you. Um, thank you, Anna. I really think I love when you wear yellow. I feel like it's, it brightens you. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gonna try to butter me up. I'm, <laughs> that was the last nice thing I'm doing. I'm done. Nobody, nothing else. Court calls the case. People versus Alicia Daniels.
Ready, Judge. Torsho Feaster, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Alicia Daniels. I think I got a couple cases now, Judge, where you can do something mean to make up for all the niceness. <laughs> the counteract. Yes, Judge. Right. I, feel, I feel all out of balance. All right. <laughs> These might be some cases to help you out, Judge. All uh, right. Ms. Daniels, if you're present, please unmute and state your name for the record. Nope, not here. Ben Warren. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> yeah. Ben Warren will issue for defendant's failure to appear. Bond will be set in the amount of $7,500. I'll give a 10% privilege. That warrant will issue immediately. Thank you, Judge. We're we'll the case, People versus Anthony Ford. Attorney Feaster, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Mr. Anthony Ford. Uh, Mr. Ford, if you are present, please unmute and state your name for the record. Anthony Ford. Yep, there he is. Okay, so are you driving right now? Because I got to have you pull over. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, you got to be stationary. I'll pass it. You got to get yourself stationary before we can deal with it, okay? Okay. All right. I'll pass your case. Thank you, Judge. I only have the board as a recall. Court. Recalls the case, People versus Anthony Ford. He was the one that was driving. Ready, Judge. Torsho Feaster, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, if you can unmute, turn your camera on, and state your name for the record. I'm still driving. You're still driving? Why? How long does it take you to pull over? I'm about to, I'm about to be, I'm pulling over literally in two minutes. Okay, two minutes. then I, here's I'm what I'm going to do. My, go ahead. This is my last case in this block, so I was trying to get off the bench. I, Your Honor, I literally two minutes. I'm right here pulling into my daughter's face. All right, we'll room. wait. Just all right, we'll wait. Literally. Okay. Sorry, Judge. <laughs> no, you're not. I, I, <laughs> I assumed he had pulled over. I guess he's trying to get his daughter to the physical therapy, Judge. I apologize. Okay. All right. I was running late. I apologize too. <laughs> We're calling the case people versus Caitlin Ogden. Good afternoon, Your Honor, Assistant Public Defender Brian J. Craig on behalf of Miss Caitlin Ogden. Ma'am, please unmute yourself and state your full name for the record, please. Um, Caitlin Shea Ogden. Thank you. Um... Teresa Plair on behalf of probation. Your Honor, Ms. Ogden is scheduled before the court today for a violation of probation hearing. Um, Ms. Ogden is in violation of her probation um, given that she has failed to report um, to probation following her sentencing. Um, she owes a balance of $1,275 and has made no payments to the court. She failed to drug test weekly as the court ordered. She failed to complete a substance abuse assessment within 10 days or provide proof of a substance abuse treatment uh, program. She failed to obtain her GED. Um, she failed to sign her probation order. She also, Your Honor, has outstanding warrants at the 23rd District Court and 27th District Court. Um, probation is recommending that she be remanded to serve 365 days in jail with credit for five days served to serve the balance and to report to the Washtenaw County Jail by 6 p.m. That she complete the in-jail Dawn Farm program, waive remaining terms, accept the financial obligations, and discharge from probation without improvement. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This is a clear instance of my client failing to thrive or even take off to do any of the requirements as set That's forth by the probation. True. That is not true. Ms. Ogden, let, I'll just allow me to advocate on your behalf. These are serious allegations, Your Honor. And my client acknowledges that there are many factors, if not all, that she has failed to thrive on and take off in regards to your requirements. We're asking the court at this time to allow my client the opportunity not to be exposed to the full maximum penalty of the 365. This has certainly brought to her attention the need to begin doing the very minimum um, in terms of bringing herself into compliance before your court. She has indicated to me that she has taken steps to begin the process of obtaining her GED. This is low hanging fruit in terms of what is required of her to do. But we're asking the court to suspend the 365, allow her to serve a shorter jail term to allow her to continue on probation and allow her to prove to herself or prove to both herself and to this court that she is capable and competent and will follow through with your orders. 
We understand it's been many months since you've imposed a sentence. By my calculations, we're almost at nine months. So I asked the court for that consideration and compassion towards my client in regards to her situation. And Ms. Ogden, if there's anything I have not articulated in terms of what you have done in this probation related case, please let the court know succinctly and us uh, in this matter. Thank you. I know. I just need a second. And your honor, um, from probation stance, um, the, the reason probation was providing a jail recommendation, I, I had um, concerns given her just drop off from probation and her failing to test that there um, may have been continued drug problems. Um, no, that is not continued drug problems. Ms. Ogden, do not interrupt. Just allow her okay. to state her position. <laughs> And that was the concern before probation's stance, Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor, my client is obviously very emotionally distraught at this news in terms of when I delivered it to her in terms of the proposed recommendation. And she, I believe at this stage, understands the seriousness of what is before her. And we're asking just for an opportunity for her to attempt to redirect the ship while on probation because it, to use the metaphor, it's never left the harbor because at this stage she needs in terms of to take the very minimum steps to do what this court has asked of her. So we're asking for that opportunity. I mean, I think what needs to be remembered is this started out as a felony, was reduced to a misdemeanor and I, re I remember taking the plea and um, one of the reasons they had done that the way they did it is because during a cer certain circumstance with this defendant where she resided in the, the drug courts and they purposely made sure because it was a one case that it was going to come before, before me on the plea form which is very unusual for me I added to the plea form that she needed treatment we added that to the plea. Um, she accepts that offer and then did nothing. Nothing. I mean, I, I would like to even be able to say, well, at least she did X. I have nothing at all. Your Honor, it's like, I, I like, I, I, when I was going through everything then, I was doing everything fine. And then somehow everything got a mess and like everything was falling apart. Like I, I lost my car, I ended up losing my job. And like, I've been building everything back together piece by piece. And I am so sorry that I did not do what I was supposed to do then, but I didn't have the money. I had to make sure that they wanted me to make payments. And I was scared to make that payment because then I wouldn't have a roof over my children's head. And I felt like it was wrong, but like, I'm just asking you like, please, I just, please just give me another chance just to, to do everything. <laughs> I don't want to lose my babies. And I'm just, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I can do it. I just, I just needed, I just needed to get it together. And I got it together. And now I feel like it's too late, but I know that I can do it. And I'm just asking you, please, just for one more chance just to show you that I won't let you down and that I can do it. <laughs> like, I, and the, <laughs> Ma'am, I don't. <laughs> to be honest with you, the money was the least of my work. I run into folks that have issues with money all the time. I know it was the other problem. thing. I, I can other thing. Go ahead. 
I'll let you finish. Ms. Ogden, those are the exact words that came out of my mouth yesterday. That's the lowest in terms of concerns. The others the are much higher. Center. I can enroll into the guidance center. It's right here for an outpatient program. Like I didn't have like a way, I didn't have the card, and, but I have everything in order now. And I already knew I messed it up. So I was waiting for the court date just to tell them like, I'm doing it all and I can do it all. I don't think by me going to jail and away from my kids for years, really gonna help and I get it that it's my fault. I'm the reason why I'm here right now, but I just I was I just need another chance. I know I know I don't deserve it, but like I swear. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Ma'am, you got, make me look stupid. You, more, you you you've done nothing here. Nothing. I cleared and up Taylor for Don't interrupt. Miss Ogden, don't interrupt. Let the judge, Miss Ogden, okay. stop interrupting. Let him make a point. He's trying to work through this with you in terms of rendering a decision. You've got, which warrant did you say you took care of? Your Honor, there's two matters, Taylor and Riverview. Yeah, but... Ms. Eisen, unmute. Tell me which warrant you're saying you took care of. I can't hear you, Ms. Eisen, because you're muted. I missed the court. I, I took care of Taylor's, and then I missed the court date for that. And then I talked to the probation officer. I'm supposed to call back up there today, and she's supposed to speak with me to clear it out to set me a new court date. And then reviews, I've um they tried to say that it was for for my daughter not going to school. Every time, Your Honor, that she's missed school, it was for a dentist appointment or a doctor's appointments. Then for the ENT, because she had fluid in her ear, she had to have surgery in it. And like, I have, like, they can, I can get a fax number and fax all that over to you. Like, that Ms. wasn't- Miss Ogden, okay. So it's there's like, two matters, Your Honor. To, yes, but I can clear them up today. Like, it's- They have I've not Miss so Ogden, Miss Ogden. <laughs> If I sent you for a drug test today, is that going to come back clean? You better be honest with me. Is that going to come back clean? There's some marijuana in my system. Yeah, you're you're using. <laughs> but they told me that if I got my med card, I would be able to. Miss Ogden, we discussed this. Yes, I know. You were that, the, the court ash. Ms. Ogden. But the, but the it's court's the one who told me that if I was to get a medical medical uh, card, that I would it be able not to get in trouble from Washington County. That's what the lady told me. She said if I wanted to um, not get in trouble for yeah. it to get the card, and I couldn't yeah. get in trouble. I know, but that's she, a part of probation. Yes, but I would right. drop every Ms. day. Ogden. Like, I would flush it Hold out on. now. And Hold I on, Miss Ogden. Your Honor, this is the asking for permission after the fact. It's I believe she has the card, but has not submitted reading, it to community correction. I'm reading yeah. right now from the magistrate's form. Right. Because it was a drug case. Uh, and it's to be no yeah. possession right. of any illegal drugs, alcohol, or marijuana. Correct. <laughs> but so I <laughs> Is that the only thing that's going to show up? Yes, Your Honor. Only thing. Only thing. You can have my blood. You can have my hair. Like you can. You know, like, I swear. <laughs> and the problem is, I can't find now one thing. I can't even, I don't even see that you tried. I mean, there are folks I'm sure on this screen that have had difficulties. They talk to probation and they work through it by the time it even gets to me. And you did nothing. I did try. And then I left a voicemail on the, the probation officer's phone and was wanting her to call me back. And I, that was forever ago. I've called her multiple times. To talk about it before I came here. Wait, your Honor, I can tell you. Ms. Malera, you go ahead. Yeah. yeah, Your Honor, I can tell you that um, there was a re uh, return call to her. A message was left. Um, 
trying to get her back into compliance regarding getting her order reporting and payments. Um, and she was advised to contact us ASAP. And I contacted you ASAP. I've called up the, there's voicemails on there that I have left. It's not that I didn't try. I tried. I was terrified too, because I know somehow I messed it up. And that's why I was scared. <laughs> Ms. Blair, when was that call? That rejected? was back. That was back in July, Your Honor. When she called me. No, there was also when I called her back. It was after that. Miss Ogden, that is at the onset of this case. Okay, I understand. All right. Right, we understand, and we're just trying to walk through what we can point to that has been some level of progress or success. And I think the only thing we've heard thus far is you've made an attempt to get into a GED program because now, now you realize the seriousness. I don't of even know. And then I got oh, into right. the guidance center. I got into the guidance center too in the beginning too. And I had to do an assessment thing. And then they wanted to drug test me and all kinds of stuff. I was doing that too. And then I knew I messed it up, probation. So, I, but I, I can get proof of all where, that. Like, I Where are you me. getting... Ma'am, today's a day. So you're telling me you can get proof of all this, but today's the day. I know. I know. And my question to you is, where are you enrolled to get a GED? Asher. It's Did you send anything regarding that enrollment to probation? No, I, I haven't sent nothing. Why not? Because I didn't know if I was still going or not. I called the lady, Your Honor, and it wasn't just in July. I've left a voicemail on her phone asking her to call me back. And then she called me and then I called her back. I've even went on the online thing to try to fill it out too, on the court thing. Like, it's not like I just, I didn't, I like, I don't know. <laughs> Anything else for the court imposes sentence? Your Honor, I would just ask that you consider the initial premise that a shorter jail term would be appropriate. I think you have, we have brought her attention to the seriousness of what's going on. I think that that would be an opportunity. I don't want to set up for failure, but a shorter jail term, I think, would certainly impart upon her the seriousness of what's going on with this case. Or just another two? No. <laughs> You know, time and time again, I realize that we give people certain tasks to do, and sometimes life interferes. And as I said, there are probably some here. We've had some earlier today. And I don't, if somebody's making some effort to do something, um, even though they may not contact probation, you, they've got proof that they've done something. Um, to try and either rectify the problem or do whatever within their means. <laughs> this is one of those rare cases I come across where I have nothing. I have nothing that I can point to to say this defendant tried to do something that since June... When I imposed sentence in this case, June 23rd, that she tried to do something. Um, nothing. The um, bad fact of the matter is that when she was originally charged with the felony, everybody, yeah, husband, friends, counsel, everybody was so trying to work with her to try to set an appropriate course that she could follow. And there were extensive conversations between counsel and then with the court and an understanding of where this defendant needed to go. And she did nothing. That's not true. Mr. Your Honor, Ms. Ms. Ogden, we're, it's, it's of no... 
it's no, futile no. to continue to argue the point. We've covered it multiple times. Do not argue with the judge. I'm not arguing with him. I'm not that stupid. Then, then tell me what, okay, you just said I was lying and not telling the truth. Tell me what was untrue about what I said, Miss Ogden. No, 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 I'm saying like I did, I did try, Your Honor. You so just I told did. me as I was going through, that's not true. Tell me what I said that was not true. No, I'm sorry, everything you said was true, but I, I didn't mean it like that, I'm sorry. So, I'm so, just... so Miss Ogden, put the shovel down, stop digging the hole. I know, I just, I'm stop. scared. <laughs> just done because you you really haven't done anything you've apparently gone through life talking your way out of everything you've run into the wrong judge i'm done it is the sentence of the court since it's defended 365 days washington county jail i will give her credit for the five days that she served i will order at this time the defendant is to serve the balance i will further order the defendant is to report to the washington county jail by 6 p.m today sharp if she is there at 601, a bench warrant will issue. She will then be picked up and held without bond. She is to complete the in jail Dawn farm program. I will waive any additional terms except her financial obligations and discharge her from probation without improvement. With reference to the sentencing, and I'm only doing this in deference to counsel, if the defendant does turn herself in timely, the court will at some point reconsider the time on her sentence. If Thank it you. turns out that the defendant does not turn herself in timely and or is picked up on the warrant that will issue, then she will do the entirety of the 365. So now she has another choice to make whether she wants to follow the court's instructions or not. Very good, Your Honor. Thank I will, you. I'll relay that. Thank you, Your Honor. Or it calls the case of the people versus Brian Gerard. Ready, Judge Torsho Feaster, Assistant Public Defender, on behalf of Mr. Gerard. Mr. Gerard, if you are present, please. Brian Gerard. Brian Gerard. Thank you, Judge. Um, I reached out to Mr. Gerard uh, via the contact numbers we had here and via email. Um, we did not speak on this file. Um, I have seen the recommendation from probation. I believe it is recommending uh, jail time in this file uh, due to Mr. Gerard's failure to comply with. Uh, well, he served 207 days okay. already. So the recommendation that I have is 365 days credit to 207 balance suspended yes, plus fine costs and restitution. Oh, that, okay, yes, Judge, I see that. Uh, I'm prepared to move forward, but I don't know if Mr. Gerard was going to be wanting a new date since he had not contacted our office and responded to my message. I've, con I've contacted your office. I've left messages. I've, I've Really? I've, really? Yeah. Same way you did for your PSI, where you failed three times doing that? I, I, I did my, I, I thought I did my PSI. Um, yeah, was, like you probably thought you contacted your attorney. I don't really need to have a recommendation. If he actually wants to cooperate with the attorneys and there's something that he can put forth, then I don't mind adjourning it out for that purpose. But I don't want to come back here where he's just going to say the attorney didn't contact me when it seems he cannot pick up a phone and contact anybody. Mr. Gerard, do you want to go forward today or would you like a chance to talk to our office? I don't know. Am I going to jail? That's up to the judge. But <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I don't know what more I have to do. I've and gone I, in there, signed my paperwork. I've signed a Mr. year. Gerard, Mr. Gerard, the judge just wants to know, do you want to move forward today or would you like an adjournment to talk to my office? I'd like an adjournment. Talk to your office. Okay, thank you, Judge. If we could have. If he comes back here, because he's missed his PSI three times, and I'm actually shocked. Miss Polera sometimes can be a saint because <laughs> she, that she's not recommending the full amount 
of time. Crossed my mind. I know it did. I know it did. And then he comes here and says he's contacting the attorneys and the attorneys haven't been in contact. I'll adjourn it out. But if he comes back here and he has not contacted counsel's office and has not, I can answer your question, Mr. Gerard, as to whether or not there'll be jail. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. May 11th, Judge? Yes, May 11th, 9 a.m. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Court calls the case. People versus Joanne Januska. Thank you, Judge. Attorney Feaster, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Joanne uh, Januska. Uh, Ms. Januska, please unmute and state your name for the record, please. Joanne Januska, present. Do you, have, do you have video, ma'am? I'm trying to get it. There it is. Thank you very much. Your Honor, I have had a chance to speak to Ms. Januska. Uh, we did discuss the uh, recommendation in this case. Uh, Ms. Januska, uh, like my first client in this block, uh, did have a issue uh, with the sober link. Uh, I discussed with her uh, that, that it was gonna be switched to a scram tether per the recommendation, I believe. Uh, she indicated that she has rheumatoid arthritis and she was concerned about wearing a scram tether given her arthritic condition of her ankles, if I'm not mistaken. Sir, she doesn't want the sober link. She doesn't want the scram. That, that's what that she related to me. With only one other option. I don't think she wants that either. I no. don't think so. Either. No, uh, I've gotten really flexible with uh, whatever you want. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, anybody addressing me, that was like the smartest thing I've heard today. All right. <laughs> Good uh, other than that, Your Honor, uh, she is uh, looking forward to, to uh, putting this matter behind her. She's willing to go through the terms of probation. She's uh, trying to work with Secretary of State to uh, be able to get el be eligible to get her driver's license back. But other than that, Your Honor, she would uh, like you to adopt the recommendation, please. Mr. Nuska, anything else? Anything you want to tell me, ma'am? Um, I'm trying my best to do whatever you tell me to do. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> That's it's my easy. story. I'm sticking with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Court calls the case. Uh, the people versus Christina Larraway. Assistant Public Defender Brian J. Craig on behalf of Christina Larraway. Ms. Larraway, will you state your name for the record, please? Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Christina Larraway. Thank you. Your Honor, today's date and time set for a sentencing hearing and a review. I had the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Laraway in anticipation for the sentencing hearing and review. At this time, we ask that you adopt the recommendation as set forth in case number 2110467, the A and B case. We believe that is a fair and ideal resolution in the matter. And in terms of the review, my client is capable of making a payment today of $25 are paying $25 a month. And as soon as she gains employment, she can be making more substantial payments to resolve the matter ending in 0205. Is that your understanding, Ms. Laraway, how you wish to proceed? Yes. Very good. Laraway, anything, you, I, on, I'll do it this way. On the re, yes, go ahead, Ms. Sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but it's my understanding that Mr. Hendy, um, her grandfather is present and would like to oh. address the court. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not. No, no, thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Hendy? He's, he's on the screen. I do. You have him not named on the docket, but he's actually the victim. We weren't notified necessarily, but he's the victim in this in the assault and battery case. Yeah, Mr. Hendy, yes. you unmuted. Uh, you you're good. You have okay. uh, do you have video, or did you want to just speak to the court? We would just like to speak to the court, saying okay. Go ahead, we, sir. Uh, we don't have any. Uh, what do I want to say? Um, issues with with Christina at this point. We wish her the best. Everything that's happened in the future, uh, I mean, in the past, is 
in the past. Um, we're trying to work toward resolution in her life so that she can, she did, uh, I guess, pass her certification exam with Ross Medical School. So she's got, plus all her coursework, so she's got all that under her belt now. I told her what she probably should do is call Ross and call their placement service if they've got one and see if they can line up a, or help her line up a job uh, and go from there so that she can become employed. I mean, that's why she went to school to, to begin with and we helped her through. So um, we're just wishing the best for her. We're wishing that she can, hoping that she can find a job and be productive in her life at this point. Thank, thank you, sir. Ms. Laraway, anything you want to say? Yes, that um, I'd like to say thank you, Papa, and I love you, and thank you for getting me through this rough time. I'm sorry that I came to this and everything that happened did, but I'm just glad that we got it resolved and that we're working towards being a family again. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad that this could all work out in a decent manner. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Larraway? Yes, Your Honor. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm glad that your grandfather's here. Um, why do you think I threw you in jail? Because I was extremely disrespectful to my grandparents and I was not following your recommendations. I was not doing as you had asked. And no matter what my excuses were, that's what had to happen. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. And I needed to, I needed some time to get my head back together and focus on what's really important. You know, there are times that I wish I could have video of people at different times. And I'm just kind of a plain spoken kind of person, but also that as a judge. And the only way that I can describe you is, Miss Laraway, is you were a mess. I, was going I mean, to in a lot of ways, you were beyond a mess. And your grandparents, I, I don't think anybody would have even thought twice had they just given up on you. I mean, they were trying to offer you support. At one point, they took you back into the home and then you messed that up. And your grandfather did one of the bravest things I think that either a parent or grandparent could do. He just put his foot down and he just said no more. The remarkable thing now that this, as I listen to him today is that through all of that, and that was probably some of the hardest things he had to do to his granddaughter. He never stopped loving you. And that was exemplified just by what he said here today. Well, he's, he's more than my grandfather, Your Honor. He, he's raised me since I, was, since I was in my mother's womb. He's my daddy. I, yeah, I, I'm also aware of that. And then even after all you put it through, I, all he wants, he comes here to a, a sentencing regarding a circumstance where you assaulted them. <laughs> and all he wants to do is impart another lesson to you in life to make your life better. That's amazing. There aren't a whole lot of people, Ms. Laraway, <laughs> that have it in them to have that grace. No, Your Honor, they don't. And I want to spend as much time as, on this earth as I can with them. And that is part of my plan and goal is to be a family again. 
You're lucky you have the opportunity. Yes, Your Honor, I am. On the um, 205 case, I think it is. Um, I will order payments at $25 per month. When are you going to begin that? Um, I will be getting that either tomorrow or Friday. Here's what I'll do. $25 a month beginning May 1st. Yes, Your Honor. And then every month thereafter. Okay. And the assault and battery charge. There's not much we can do. It's $125 statutory fees. I will then order 93 days in jail credit for the 93 that you serve. Thank you. Fair way. Good luck to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Randy, thank you so much, sir. Take care. Thank you.